Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to continue with the Kima Essentials series. This time taking a look at the process Kima goes through getting a sound ready to play. Seems easy enough. Let's check it out. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I've double clicked a generic source stereo disc from the prototypes and I've replaced the sample with one of my own Armenian Elevator 7th version here. And I'm using this sound because I'm going to show you the difference between having the disc as a source and RAM as a source. So typically what we would do is just highlight this and then press spacebar to play it. But what's actually happening there? So that's what we're going to look at. What's happening is a process known as compile, load, and start. And this is the same regardless of whether the, the sound is something super simple like this, you're in a timeline, a multi-grid, or an expansive sound editor with many classes and prototypes. So let's check this out. Action, compile, load, and start, and just keep an eye on the cursor. Okay, so you might have noticed there that it changed. So there's actually visual clues as well uh, for this process of compile, loading, and starting. So the first part here, during the compile phase, this is where Kima is referencing and getting all the parts of the sound ready. So this is sample files, analysis files, text files, image files, anything the sound needs to go, Kima's looking for it and making sure it's all ready to go. It's also divvying up the processing, which I have four processors here, so it's getting the sound scheduled and divvied up there if necessary. And then it's also compiling any CapiTalk for real-time evaluation on your hardware accelerator. So in this case, this rate bit of CapiTalk is getting, getting ready for real-time evaluation. Then after that, we go to the load phase. This is where the time tagged instructions actually get sent over to your hardware accelerator, in my case, the Pacarana. And during this phase, we see the, the cursor change from the clock that it was during the compile point to a now somewhat retro looking computer going to another computer and that's to symbolize your host computer sending the information to the hardware accelerator. We also notice that there might be a little waveform that appears on the screen, and this is the point at which samples are being loaded into the RAM of your hardware accelerator. And then we go to the start point, which is where the time counter down here in your DSP status window will start, and the playback of the sound begins. So let's see if we can see all that. I'm going to switch this source from disk to RAM because I want to see that point at which the cursor switches into uh, a little waveform loading it into RAM. If I left it on disk, we wouldn't see that because the sound would instead read that file straight from my disk. And then the final thing to notice is the cursor is black right now. When the sound is actually playing, it's white. So let's check all this out again. Keep an eye on the cursor. Notice the time counter going, and the cursor is white. Kill the sound, cursor goes back to black, and that's essentially the process. Regardless, like I said, of the environment or the organizational medium you're using, it will be the same. And that's why you notice sometimes you play a sound and it seems to happen in the blink of an eye, and other times it takes a lot longer. So knowing a bit about it can help you. For example, if you had some really long samples, you might like to read them straight from the disk to save a bit of time from loading it into the RAM. Of course, if you have the time, it's always preferable to have it in the RAM of your hardware accelerator, but still just something good to have in your back pocket just in case. You also might like to notice that you can compile and load a sound without starting it. This can be particularly useful, again, if you have a sound that's uh, very expensive, takes a long time to get ready before a performance or a meeting, you might like to compile and load, in which case we'll see the first part of things go, but notice it's not playing, 
then I can go up to DSP, restart, and we hear it. Finally, you can also compile to disk, which will do just the first part of the process. Compile test version one, that's fine, I'll save it. And it's going to compile this sound here. We see some of those same graphics. And then I can play this sound by going to File, Play, Compile test version one. You'll notice that this is not a, a WAV file. It's a compiled sound file. Let's go ahead and open it. But this is how you could play other WAV or AIFF files. Same process. And there we go. You notice the cursor changed to white. And again, the counter started. When I kill the sound, stop time cursor goes back to black. So there you have it. There's a few um, tips and pointers on the compile, load, and start sound. You can also expedite this a bit under your Kima preferences and your frequently used folders. If you reference a lot of analysis files or sample files or any files at all, you want to make sure that they're here in your frequently used folders because this is where Kima will look first instead of looking on your whole disk and this can help save some time as well during this process. Okay, that's all for now. I hope that was useful for you. If you're into this kind of thing, please be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.